welcome everyone to yet another lecture today and i hope that all of you are safe at your place uh, today is day 16 although my thumbnail right now says day 15 i'm going to correct that uh, after the class uh, so how are you, all of you doing uh, i hope you are doing well and that you are ready for a brand new session today we are going to work on something very important today that is weak squares understanding what weak squares are and i'm going to show you a lot of interesting things i did get the feedback that yesterday's class was quite difficult and also a bit boring for many of you but i think it was an important one maybe uh, at some point it will be useful for you as a chess player and you can always revisit it okay so good morning to all of you who are here k shiva shivam choudhary shahid hussain quest abhinav bhat swayam ubale kimaya virle riddiman barma tarush yadav kalidas pechi ganesh sanjeev kumar who says i am an indian army soldier wow wonderful prathamesh divekar angel manyar abhinav bhat reshu jain mukilan bala swayam ubale so a lot of people here and i think uh, it's time to begin with what we do always uh, so are you ready for some tactics let's go okay uh, yes here and let's go to account.chessbase.com and to the tactics trainer okay so this is white to move first one usually is pretty easy advait vibhute says can you stream today's fundraiser tournament i think my job will be better done by vidit today who will be streaming live at 8 o'clock i'll be telling you more details about that by the way someone has contributed 100 rupees already uh, who is it rishila banerji thank you so much rishila for your contribution and also kunal singh who says gives 40 rupees and says will amruta ma'am make more videos on sicilian khan yes i think she should make them and i'm going to tell her that you have also requested the same i hope to get her on one of the streams in the next 4 days yes all of you are right with rook into c6 queen into c6 and knight e7 well done guys uh getting sharp day by day uh, no more mistakes also in the notation i see which is a nice thing yeah everyone is working on it you see the rook is pinned so you will win the queen okay let's go to the next one this one is white to move well we are back uh, and there was a small lag uh, i hope that today we won't be affected by the internet too much uh, well some things are just not in my control i called the internet company yesterday and i told them to fix it but well right now during the times of corona it's very difficult to get anyone into action so um, well we have to make do with what we have and i hope it won't cause trouble again so for now everything looks okay this one is white to move what do you do here as white but thanks to your messages i get an idea that it's lagging so yeah i'll be giving you information about 
the blitz tournament also the funds that have been raised and all of it yeah bishop into c6 is what is mentioned here but well don't you then just take queen into e3 rook e3 and b into c6 with a fine position queen into f2 says pankaj rook into f2 rook into e7 but now what if i take knight into e7 isn't that uh, equal material okay ilam parthi is here with an interesting suggestion like always queen to c5 wow okay queen d7 rook d5 queen c8 bishop c6 bc6 queen c6 interesting ilam parthi uh, after queen c5 is that the only move in the position now the problem with queen into f2 as all of you have been mentioning uh, is that by the way if for anyone it's buffering or there is a lag then just refresh uh, the if you take queen into f2 then um, rook into f2 and if rook into e7 then knight into e7 and i think the position is around i mean there is nothing wrong in fact black is a pawn up so the right move here is to go queen c5 attacking the queen if the queen takes sorry not this move if the queen takes the queen then i go rook e8 check and it's a mate because knight d8 rook d8 but if you don't take the queen how do you defend this square that is the question on e8 so i see one option being queen d8 other option being queen um, d7 these are the two options but in both cases you can play rook into d5 and then take on c6 next move and then you i think you get a better position there so that looks like the correct move queen c5 and now ah rook d2 wow that came as a surprise i mean a shocker did you see that move uh well if you take rook into d5 arpit kumar uh, but then it's just like i can take queen into e3 and the position is around equal so this one you are trying for win mayur uh, gondalekar good morning joining in from japan good to have you for you it's i think uh, already what afternoon okay so queen uh, what rook d2 now the question is can we take rook into e7 is one move well if you play rook into d2 then queen into e1 what else um because rook into e7 rook d1 king b2 and now if rook into e7 then i have bishop into c6 winning the rook but he takes knight into e7 and then okay it seems like there should be some tactic but i think black is surviving there and right now the threat is to just take here so any suggestions to all those who say rook e7 what if he takes rook d1 and knight e7 how do you continue virendra thank you so much for contributing 100 rupees and he says i wish every one of us who's attended who's attending and each one who's been part of this chalk down session which is chess plus lockdown chamily which is chess plus family meet soon in person well virendra that was wonderful of you thanks for those wishes now the question is uh, can you play can you move your rook away here that is one question 
Ilam Parthi has a suggestion also Chanchal Ja Prathamesh Divekar uh, Is it lagging again? Ah, okay, for now it seems okay King B2 also, but King B2 Rook D1 just transposes, but Rook C1 now Queen is hanging so you play Queen D7 Bishop into C6 and now if I play b into c6 then queen b4 check and I win the rook but if you take queen into c6 how does that work out queen ah queen e3 attacking the rook and also queen e8 mate beautiful yes so rook c1 this is a quite a tough move because now black has no real good move here knight e5 I will tell you the variations later uh, again now what do we do come on can anyone tell me after knight e5 what can we do well i think for now there's no lag if in case uh, anyone's facing some lag issues then just refresh your browser Yeah, after ninety five, what do you do here? I think um, again, if you take rook e five, queen e five, there's no mate, yes. Yeah, now I think queen e three or queen c three. Which one is the better move? Because if queen e3, that also should work, right? Queen e3 and uh, the rook is hanging, also the knight is hanging. And even if you play queen c3, both are hanging. So which one should be correct? Either of the two. What's your choice? Some say queen e3, some say queen c3. Whew. Anyone who has found a flaw in either of the two moves or both are equally good yeah i think both seem to be good if both are equally good then i would go for queen e3 perhaps ah not the strongest move queen c3 Okay, let me just figure out where I went wrong. Okay, let me go settings, stream, output. Well, it seems like today we're going to have a tough day. Uh, for now, it's buffering. Well, welcome everyone back. Uh, what I tried to do right now is uh, 
maybe reduce the quality of the stream uh, so that at least although the quality can be a little low but still all of you can can see me watch me uh, so let's let's have a look at this today John Wong says 240p but 240p would be too less yeah so I, I just uh, reduced it a bit let's see if this works for now it seems okay uh, so my question was this is a beautiful puzzle by the way queen e7 you go queen c5 rook d2 this was a tough move to, to find uh, and then to actually go rook c1, queen d7, then you take bishop into c6. And if b c6, queen b4 and win the rook. And if queen c6, then you play queen e3, attacking this rook and also threatening a mate. Okay, there's still some problem. Well, uh, let's try once more uh, and then hope that it stays there. And in case of some issues, uh, okay, so. I, my, my only question here was if in this case knight e5 why isn't queen e3 also winning why is queen c3 the only move so that was my my question Okay, everyone, uh, let's hope that things can improve now and uh, we, we'll try. I keep trying. I tried to restart my internet connection. Uh, and if this works out, maybe we'll have, we'll be able to fix this. Um, yeah, you can let me know whenever there is a lag. Uh, well, knight f3 in this position would mean that I can just take on e7, yeah. So that should be fine. Take, take, and win. Um, okay, so let's. But anyway, queen c3 is also pretty okay. I mean, both moves are pretty good. So what I do is I can switch on the engine here and actually check if queen e3 is also fine. Queen e3 has rook takes h2, queen e5. Queen e5, rook e5, and this is perhaps not as clear as it should be because black has two pawns. But if you play queen c3, then after rook into h2, rook into e5, I think uh, white is just mating. So that's the difference between both the lines. Queen e8 is uh, next move, rook e8 is coming. And that's why, uh, by the way, for all those who are facing lag issues now, please refresh your browser. I think I have been able to solve it to a maximum extent. But in case if we face the problem today, uh, well, can't help it. Okay, so let me go to today's class. I think the work workout with the tactics was quite tough, uh, not, not just positions wise, but also with all the disconnections. But I think this is okay for now. Uh, let's begin with today's session and it's going to be very interesting. I want your opinion on many of the questions that I'm going to pose you. So let's first get the first position of the day and see if 
all of you are good enough to solve this one. Okay, so this one is white to move. What should white play here? Well, for all those who think that the output is slightly blurry, for me it looks okay. Uh, just refresh your browser. Yeah, everyone's saying uh, the Chrome must have done something, but. Yeah, it, it's not to be seen here. Maybe it just cut off the internet. By the way, for all those who can't see it well, it's buffering. Just reload. Reload this. Refresh your screen. It's working fine now. Yeah. So here it's a point how to create weaknesses in the position. Okay. Weak pawns creating a weakness. Uh, requires the use of pawns many times and all those who said knight to d5 well it's a good move it's a possible move but he can just play bishop d8 and control it but the right way as has been co correctly mentioned by many I'll read up a few names now work up um, who else everyone knight d5 yeah but very few people have actually mentioned practical thinking has said it sanchit yeah abdul kalam soham shirode prasun biswas saurav banerji good job all those who said h5 very good because now what you are doing is you want the d5 square for the king and you want the f5 square for the knight. Okay, so this is how it will work. Gh, gh, bishop f8, knight goes to f5. And now the bishop cannot move here because it's fixed to this pawn weakness. So the king has to move. So once the king moves back, your king enters in and then it's game over. b5, you play a5. C, b4 c4 and now if he goes this side you can already go this side and win this pawn if he goes this side as in the game then you go to e6 and you finish him off so this was uh, a nice move h5 was really a good move by white n d5 is not a bad move at all bishop d8 but if you have one weakness in the position then why not create another one and you remember Nimzovich's story yes the story with uh, the cigarette story where his opponent lights up not lights up takes a cigarette and he goes to the arbiter and complains and uh, he says but he's not yet lit up the cigarette and he tells him threat is stronger than execution and here it's the same case the d5 square is in enticing and the knight should jump there but the threat is stronger than execution and so you create another weakness with h5 and then you are able to uh, if g5 knight f5 bishop f8 and now maybe uh, here We could do that or let's say can we go knight d5 here because now there are so many weaknesses uh, in this position maybe knight d5 is also interesting like knight d5 bd8 a5 is also possible but fixing a weakness is very important here on h6 okay uh, let not black get the move h5 by which his bishop is not limited okay by the way a big thanks to suhritim sanyal who's contributed two dollars and says who are your five greatest players ever uh tough question but uh, well i would definitely put capablanca in that list i really like him 
uh, I mean, I'm I'm more tending towards positional players. So, of course, Fisher cannot be avoided. Um, Kasparov, Carlson, and um, well, being an Indian, I would say definitely Vishy Anand. So these may be the five: Capablanca, Fisher, Kasparov, Carlson, and Anand. Uh, also, you know, if you're looking at pure chess terms. Maybe there are other players, but if you are looking at successes, then also you would have different players. Like Anand's successes are just phenomenal because um, someone non-Soviet coming in and you know holding the world title for six years, it's just phenomenal. Okay, so we go to the next position now. And this one is the second one for the day. What should black play here? By the way, Advait Vibhute, please go to Chessbase India channel and search how to make norms. You will find a video by Gopakumar, I am Gopakumar, and you will uh, learn how to make norms. Yeah. Alan K. Thomas says, I'm late for half an hour. Well, Alan, you didn't miss much. We had some technical issues. So I think you have come at the right moment. Yeah, Kimaya Virle, you are right. You are right. Geeta Muthu is right. Aditya Ramanathan says, Anand is world champion five times in a row. Yeah. Well, everyone is a positional monster here. Yeah, everyone understands. Uh, first of all, you need to create a weakness in this position. And as we have mentioned, if a bishop is fixed on the same color as his pawn, pawns are fixed on the same color as the bishop, then you must try to keep them fixed there. And therefore, here with black to move, a very good idea would be h5 yeah so first of all you fix this as a weakness and then when he pushes or takes if he takes you take with the rook so that this is weak and the knight can jump here but if he plays g5 then you go knight f5 and this is a beautiful outpost for the knight where he attacks the pawn on d4 and pawn on h4 i think uh, h5 was not a tough move but now you take the open file on the c so basically when you create a weakness and attack it opponent has to go passive and then you can get your pieces active this is a very basic example but it worked pretty well now let's move to another example here which is a very nice game by carpo Someone told me, why shouldn't Karpo be included in this list of great players? Well, I think Karpo's practical successes were phenomenal. Um, he, he became the world champion by four feet, like Fisher did not fight for the title. But for the next 10 years, from I think 1975 to 1984 or 85, he dominated the chess world like no one else. If there was Karpo playing, everyone would say, who's, who's going to get the second place? Because Karpo was always there, right up at the top. So we are going to look at a game by him. And he is white. And Karpo played. Uh, Virinci says, can we add reference table to chess base reader? I haven't tried it, but I think it should work. Reference, if you have mega database, it should work in chess base reader as well. Okay, so c4, c5, b3 was played by Karpo. Advait says, Karpo's games are positional, thus mostly boring. Well, not always. Look at this one. Bishop b2, g6. And now, what will you play here as white? 
श्रुतात माहिती वाय नॉट पॉल मॉर्फी वेल आय एम नॉट शुअर बाय द वे लेट्स ट्राय टू फोकस ऑन ऑन दिस गेम हिअर बिकॉज यु नो एलेखाईन वॉज ग्रेट फिशर वॉज ग्रेट टाल वॉज ग्रेट देर आर सो मेनी पीपल आय मीन इफ यू आस्क मी फायव्ह देन इट्स ऑलवेज गोइंग टू क्रिएट वाय नॉट दिस वाय नॉट दॅट so what did karpov play here with white yeah good move by chanchal ja very good ilam parthi as well anish adiga good job guys deepak dhami i wouldn't say it's a a good move or a bad move but it's an interesting move and the move that was played also by suggested by john darrell is to take and you know after e into f6 it's a good moment to actually take stock of what has happened because suddenly there are a lot of imbalances on the board and as we have discussed just to remind all of you these are the list of imbalances so right now i want you to look at this position and try to tell me what are the imbalances in this position for both sides okay prathamesh divekar is very very uh, creatively saying that white should have gone g4 here yeah but after bg7 i don't think you are winning a piece yet so maybe a little bit premature but not a bad idea so he took took and it's time for imbalances please write down what are the imbalances in the position okay uh, shubham soni you always come and try to paste the same things again and again please don't do that yeah this is uh, not cool <clears throat> yes d5 is a weak square says prathamesh divekar good job so this is a weak square and you know d7 is a backward pawn okay so the squares in front of the backward pawn are often weak like d6 and d5 there is double pawns as mentioned by creative master shikhar these are double pawns yes then what else yes also nandan mentions the double pawns very good who else bishop pair says dhara patel very good bishop pair for black d7 backward pawn kimaya virle good job shivam choudhary says black has semi open e file very good shivam that was a good observation semi open e file wells Aditya Ramanathan let's look at look at his solution white has better pawn structure black has a weak square on d5 okay and has doubled pawns okay that we have mentioned black has the bishop pair yes development is equal white has the initiative white has more space evaluation plus equal okay i have to explain initiative maybe in the next class it will come in the subsequent classes but i don't see how white has the initiative here initiative is basically the ability to create threats and here i don't see too many threats but rightly pointed out by all of you could very quickly understand that this square which cannot be guarded by any other pawn is a weak pawn yeah and uh, ilam parthi divya hl shri devi rongali have all written down very nicely all the points uh, and there is a nice uh, suggestion by ahmed justin who says white dark squares on the queen side may be weak you are right you see just because karpo is playing white doesn't mean that everything is in his favor so as rightly pointed out for the weakness of d5 square and the doubled pawns 
black has got the bishop pair and also the semi open e5 so it's always give and take now who can make the best use of the imbalances is the guy who's going to win this game okay so how should white start taking advantage of the imbalance can you suggest me the first move for white in this position what should white play well aditya knight c3 you can play knight d5 but okay i can go bishop g7 and castle so i'm not really creating too many threats uh, so i wouldn't say the initiative is with white already but okay it's it's debatable to some extent shruti samyal has written it point wise nicely good job shruti uh, sorry suhritim suhritim sanya uh, so yes all those who say the move knight c3 good job i think it's a good idea to begin with knight c3 controlling the d5 square i have many interesting suggestions like h4 here by someone which is not bad but in a way remember a move like d4 is just the wrong kind of move in such a position why because after let's say take queen takes bishop g7 next move i am going castles and f5 and my position opens up when you have the knights you should be trying to close the position yes so why do you want to actually play a move like d4 do you understand that it's it's going against the logical principles okay yeah so knight c3 was played in the game and then white black played bishop g7 now what's the next move here what should white play in this position many of you have already suggested this next move what should white play well in general you don't have to rush to control this square you know you already have control over it yeah work up good move shri kumar kc good move tejas joshi excellent funny verma yash ladda all of you suyansh verma so you see that once you create an imbalance shriyana malya Shoham, Shoham Shirode, Swayam Ubale, all of you have got it right. Excellent. The point is, once you create an imbalance, you have to fight for it. D5 is weak, so making a move like E3, it's possible. But why not first G3 and develop the bishop on this diagonal, controlling this square? I think Prathamesh Divekar is very, very keen on playing the move G4. It could have been a nice move, but I think after let's say d5 or even d6 both then you know you are kind of opening up this position and this is what black wants so let's not get into that g3 knight c6 bg2 now you will see this knight and this bishop both are controlling d5 so black said okay i have to activate my bishop here so what should white play now mohan mysore has contributed 100 rupees and he says hey sagar this is pratham from mysore thank you for these lessons any suggestions for tonight's tournament well i think tonight is going to be an amazing event uh, just to tell you guys who are the people playing there uh so yeah here let me go to the chessbase.in website if you go to the second article right now you will see that already 1 lakh 68 thousand rupees have been raised with it is playing today 
Arjun Erigesi made the biggest contribution of 25,000. The Sashi Kiran contributed 20,000, but he's not playing. Nilodpal Das, Barua, Vijay Lakshmi, Sri Ramja, Minakshi, uh, Sri Nath, Magesh Chandran, Arun Prasad, uh, Ankit Rajpara, Thech Kumar, Tanya Sachdev, Lakshman, Diptayan Ghosh, Nisha Mohota, Stani, SL Narayanan, Deep Sen Gupta, Argya Deep Das, Aditya Mittal, um, Gukesh, there is also Nilash Saha, Pranesh, Setu Raman, Aryan Chopra, um, Vishnu Prasanna, Kidambi, Padmini Raut, Divya Deshmukh, and also from Japan we have Kojina Shimya. Uh, Shin, uh, Shinya Kojima who is playing. The tournament is tonight at 8 p.m. Uh, at the Vishyanand Arena uh, in play chess. All the way how to play has been mentioned very clearly in this article. How to play the tournament, how to create an account, where to go, whom to play against. All of this has been mentioned. And all the money collected here is going to the PM Cares Fund for the fight against coronavirus. And uh, you can also join in by clicking here on the pay now button and paying 100 is the minimum amount, but maximum can be anything. You can contribute any amount of money and you can actually uh, play here. So I think around 12 o'clock the, the registrations would close. So after this session, please go on here to chessbase.in and then the second article here. Uh, just go in there and register. Amok Bist, thank you so much for contributing 200 uh, rupees for, for this. And uh, I hope that you are also playing tonight. Creative Master Shikhar, you have registered for tournament. But I think it will get updated in some time, the list. Um, so right now we have what, 133 players. So if you have done it recently, then it will get updated. If you have done it sometime back, then please write to team chessbase India at Gmail and they will update it. Yes, all of you can actually play in this tournament. It's open for everyone. I would also like to mention that we have been able to raise now an amount of 2,39,348, 71,000 rupees 390 from this from our live sessions, uh, from what you contribute here on YouTube and also uh, on Pay You Money link, which you can see in your uh, description first link and 1,60,7,958 from the online tournament. I am hoping that we can cross much more, but all of this amount goes to PM Cares Fund. And I, it feels nice that we are all as a chess community able to do our bit. All the details of people who have contributed is mentioned here. So every rupee is being accounted for. Okay, so time to go back to chess now. Yeah, I think uh, tonight is going to... And yes, Vidit Gujarati will be streaming his games. So on Chess Base India channel, you will be seeing him live streaming his games, which will be very interesting for all of you to follow. Okay, so no, right, for this tournament, you don't need a premium account. Yeah, you can just play. Vidit is not the commentator, but he's going to just play and sort of talk about his games. Now, here in this position, many of you suggest the move knight d5, which is very interesting because you guys want to give up this and play queen a1. All of you who said this move, I'm very, very happy. Uh, about the same that you know these classes have actually helped you to improve your understanding uh, how good is this move I'm not so sure okay but 
I mean, I, I may not even take this. I can just play castles and somehow this move knight d5, it didn't turn out to be as important. But there is a better way to play and as has been mentioned by Vedant Kulkarni, uh, also Karan Parik maybe, uh, the right move and I think many others had mentioned is e3. Yeah, stop nd4. But also there's one more idea. By the way, Harish Kumar, thank you so much for contributing 100 rupees. Uh, very kind of you for doing that. And Jaydeep Chakrabarti uh, says, how Silman's endgame book? Is that a pre-read before Dwaretsky? I think Silman's endgame course is an amazing book. Um, if you don't have your basics clear then the, that book will actually help you to read it uh, and understand certain concepts he doesn't cover a lot but he covers every position in depth so any position given in that book will have couple of pages uh, devoted to it so the basics are very clear in your mind and then when you go to Dwaritsky's endgame manual which I think is slightly tougher it will be much easier for you to understand so Jaydeep, thanks a lot for your contributions. It, it is really amazing how consistently you are contributing. Very grateful to you. Also Harish Kumar, thank you so much for uh, 60 rupees that you have contributed. Thanks a lot. Okay, so here castles and now what should white play? White to move. Yeah, these three books are pretty good on Endgame. Silman's Endgame Course, 101 Endgames You Should Know by Jesus de la Villa and then uh, Dwaritsky's Endgame. These three, I think, would be very good to do and you, you would get a good knowledge. And if you want to go very deep, then I would recommend 14 Endgame DVDs by Carsten Mueller, which is available in the Chess Base India shop. Yeah, all of you who said the move, knight e2, good job. The knight doesn't belong on f3 because from here it doesn't fight for this square. It belongs on e2 from where it can go to f4 and d5. Okay, you see how these knights make a nice square. <laughs> okay, uh, a6. Rook c1, removing the rook out of this diagonal, b5, and here d3 was played, bishop b7, castles, d6, queen d2, queen a5, rook f d1, and you will see how this weak square is now occupied after due preparation and uh, after takes takes, b4 was played. And now white to move and get a good position. I think the next move is not very tough, but it's a very thematic move in such positions. What do you play here with white? Kavita Vidit will stream at 8 p.m. today when the tournament begins. That's at 8 p.m. Yeah, Agastya Day, Chessbase 15 and Mega Database is for lifetime. Well, of course, new versions keep coming, but your version will continue to work for a lifetime. Yeah, Knight F4 is a good move, Kalidosh. Uh, Uday Paideti H4 makes complete sense. But there is a better move here. Tharunem, well done. Anish Adiga, excellent. Swanand Datar. Sabistan, Shakil, Gautam, Bala, Ilam, Parthi says H4. But all those who say, said the move D4, excellent work. Because now you see is the right moment to open up when you have complete control over the position. Uh, after Rook F D8, D C D C, Rook A D1. There's a threat of Knight E7. But at the same time, you will see that this pawn is a weakness. And white is just strategically much superior in this position. Carpo went on to win this game. Okay, so I hope you are understanding the basic idea behind weak squares. What is a weakness? And then 
you first need to create a weakness okay and most of the times you can create a weakness by some kind of an exchange or some kind of a pawn push so here you see there was an exchange and then you created this weakness and then you put your knight on c3 then put your pawn on g3 then put your other pawn on e3 and the knight so all these pieces come like this it's like um, you know my favorite cartoon series when i was young uh, called captain planet i don't know if any of you have seen it uh, where it, where they used to say let our powers combine uh, and then someone would say earth someone would say fire water and all of that and then captain planet would come out <laughs> so something like that all these pieces say let our powers combine and then uh, on the d5 square is where they have to combine okay so i'm giving you another position now white to move think in terms of how to create weaknesses and then how to take advantage of it white to move when the opponent hema logu when the opponent has bishop pair we shouldn't open but you know there are always ways at the right time like in that position after d4 yes you are opening it up a bit but your knight is already on d5 the bishop on b7 is passive so it's a pretty good time to open up things kali dosh yes maybe we can do uh, we can do rook and game one day we'll we'll try to see if we can get time to do that Hemant Justin says young people don't know about Captain Planet yeah perhaps Yeah Manu Das you are right by your powers combined I am Captain Planet <laughs> Okay very good the right answer has been given by Neev Patel Pradeep Das um Ilam Parthi very good Shashank says Captain Planet is the hero of people of your and my age most people here are much younger yeah yeah i still feel that cartoons have basically dropped in uh, in quality i mean when we were young everything has improved in quality in in general but cartoons were just so much better and now i see people watching things like uh, some japanese cartoons and also um, some peppa pig and all and i i say to myself what's happened like you know 20 years back cartoons were just much better yeah so the right move here is queen to b3 as all of you have rightly pointed out and you attack the pawn on f7 forcing e6 and then next move e5 fantastic uh, way because after knight d5 now you go knight e4 and you see how your move created weaknesses so here these are the dark squared weaknesses you create and then you push forward and jump in with your knight to take advantage of these weak squares so creating a weakness is more like you create some weakness and then clamp it down okay like we have seen in so many cases where you played h5 with white in that knight and then your knight could jump to f5 then h5 with black in that game where he could then play h5 and put his knight on f5 and here as well queen b3 e6 and e5 clamping those uh, weaknesses knight d5 knight e4 and i think the position is just better i close to very superior for white you know he can next move play bishop b2 castles uh, rook can come to d1 and in general uh, this would be a very strong position <laughs> so um, shirode says my 4 year old sister watches peppa pig very irritating well it's not so bad i mean my nephew is two and half years old also watches it and sometimes i am i'm quite hooked on to it when i see it 
okay so here's now uh, a little bit of a story time uh, i hope that you guys will enjoy it this is one of my favorite games uh, and it was played 100 and let me get the time let me get the years right 115 years ago and it was played by schlechter against john so two good players at that time everyone should know schlechter karl schlechter a very fine player and now uh, in the game it began with d4 i mean everyone is discussing about cartoons uh, d5 c4 let's let's focus now come back knight c3 queen's gambit f5 okay so here's the the story that you know everyone has a favorite opening and i know that lot of players love to play the stone wall so what is the stone wall the stone wall is to put the pawn on d5 the other pawn on c6 one pawn on e6 and the other pawn on f5 and black says i have created a wall of pawns it's called the stone wall system um and you know white players say what is stone wall you know you are basically weakening your e5 square like anything no pawn can protect it and white does many things but black says i don't care you know you can jump in there i have my bishop to control this square i have my knight that can jump in don't worry i don't have any problems okay so later on people started becoming smarter you know what they started doing is they would play c6 here so then uh, white would say okay if i go knight f3 then black takes dc4 and this is the note boom variation so this is an interesting way because uh, I will just show you one very nice line from note boom. If a4, bishop b4, e3, b5, um, bd2, a5, ab, bishop c3, bishop c3, cb, b3. Because if you take cb3, bishop into b5 check. If you play b4, bishop into b4 because a8 a rook is hanging so he must play bishop b7 bc and b4 and this is really an interesting position when i first saw it you have all these nice central pawns for white and black has these two passers on the queen side so anyone who wants to study note boom i would suggest understand this position well it's beautiful from the point of view of imbalances especially pawn structure Two passers look really scary, but they are right now stop and white can go something like bishop d3, castles, knight d2, hope to get e4, get the center rolling. Yeah. Saurav Banerjee has some very nice um, historical facts and he says Schlechter was very difficult to beat. Lasker just survived against him. Yeah, that's true. Lasker just survived against him. Um, let me just see if, uh, by the way, just to show you guys one small feature. Uh, sorry for digressing from the subject, but you know, there is this feature in Mega Database where I can find world championship matches here, you know, uh, top tournaments, world championships. And here I can go down and see the old uh, world championships from 1886. And I can go here and see Lasker versus Schlechter. Yeah, here it is. You see the score was 5-5 between Lasker and Schlechter. And so back then there was this clause, no rapid matches or anything. The world champion retains the title. And so it was a draw. This happened in 1910. Saurav Banerjee, thank you so much for uh, sharing this. This made me go back and check those um, games. By the way, homework for you guys. I hope you won't be unhappy with me. But 10 games of this match, Lasker versus Schlechter, 
please have a look at them for tomorrow it's going to help you these little things no one is doing this you know uh, but if you study them your basics become better okay uh it's called note boom yeah n o t e b o o m now let's go back so this note boom everyone started to feel a little bit afraid for of uh, all these wild lines that black would pay play so white said i will just play e3 i won't go knight f3 because you are picking up my pawn so i will play e3 and next move i will go knight f3 and then black would say now your bishop is closed on f on c1 so i am going to play f5 and this is how you know openings are developed uh, and this is basically uh, the best best way to go into a stone wall structure but you know back in the time they were just playing chess they didn't care about little uh, subtleties in the opening knight f3 knight uh, c6 was played and now tell me what is a good move for white understand the imbalances here and make a good move Sri Kumar says Laskar is a cheater because he chose easy opponents to play in the world championship. Well, very very dangerous statement to make. Uh, I wouldn't say hundred percent true. <clears throat> very good to all those who say Bishop F four. That is Geeta Ritesh, Uday Pai Deti, Tarun M, Tom Laskar. Anish Adiga, why do you want to close with e3? This is a right opportunity to get your bishop out. Preet Matre, Ilam Parthi. So basically, when I was young, Somya Mahesh, Sriyana Malia, Bishop F4, good. Uh, World Cup says, I have done Dwaretsky Endgame. What book is next, next preferable? Please answer. World Cup, I would suggest you to work with Mega Database and do the filters and look at practical games. Because if you have done Dwaretsky, you already have a lot of material. Maybe Fundamental Chess End Games by Carsten Mueller is a good book to, to be checked next. Or you can go for Carsten Mueller's End Game series of DVDs. Bishop F4, of course, all those who said that, well done, guys. You are looking at these weaknesses, you know, the weak dark squares, but also when you put your pawns on one's color squares, the other complex starts to get a little weak, especially the e5 square. Now, John Walter, who was black, he played the move bd6. And he told white, well, what do you want to do now? Do you want to exchange my bishop? Okay, come exchange. I will exchange. Next, I will put my knight on d7. I will play knight f6. I will play castles. I will put my knight on e4. And I will play, continue the game. So, Schlechter said, no, I don't want to take your bishop. What did Schlechter do? Which was a very smart move. Now, I don't think... Uh, Amai Karnitkar, the difference between big database and mega database is that mega database has 93,000 plus annotated games. Um, while big database has no annotated games. Yes, practical thinking, you are right, very good. Prathamesh Divekar also right to some extent, but I would prefer the other move here. Anup Datta, mm, well, Bishop G3, I think you have to be careful about F4, no? Wouldn't you lose material? You have bishop h4. Okay, but anyway, bishop, there is better move than bishop g3. Yeah, knight e5 is possible. Maybe knight e5. Do you look at g5 now? Is this a possible move? Looks dangerous. Also, move like e3 may come here. Because if gf, there is queen h5 and mate. 
so yeah no g5 is too much but knight e5 i can just go knight f6 perhaps Sim look simpler uh the right move is e3 and this move actually made a big big impression on me why because after takes if he didn't take but takes you want to take with the e pawn and there you see the beauty of doubled pawns you know this is imbalance at work doubled pawns are the very reason why you get open files and here although the structure you see is similar because white has pawns on d4 f4 black has d5 f5 white has control on e5 black has control on e4 but there's a huge difference one is that the e file is open for white it's a semi open file and he can attack this weakness while the e5 square is a complete outpost for the white knight the e4 square is not and white can always play f3 so this makes it really very very nice to play e3 so in the game he didn't uh, take here he played knight f6 and now bishop to d3 this is a good move okay queen to c7 what do you do now again i like this move by by uh, schlechter white to move tinku saha what should i read about you you say i never read your comments but what are you writing that i should read <laughs> Tarva Polekar also says the same. Uh, well, as I've mentioned previously, I have nothing against any of you guys. So if I don't read your comments, sorry for that. But I know that I've read comments by Tinku Saha and Atharva Polekar previously. So, well. Yes, good job. Hema Logu, Aditya Ramanathan, Uday Paideti. Dandapani Kupuswami, your move is not bad, but the d2 square is not meant for the queen because once you put your queen here, knight e4 comes with a tempo. So you don't want to put it there. Anish uh, Adiga, same thing. Yeah, Preet Matre. Gita Ritesh, good move. Ragini Ramnathan, Surya Sharma, Akshit Bhatia. I'm, I'm very happy all of you have got it right. Work up. The right move is g3 and uh, you just keep your bishop there and you want him to take, not you to take, okay. So castles, castles, knight e4 and now came a nice move. Uh, I like it very much. It's a slightly tactical move but also I mean kind of not a useful move. I would say something else could be better but he played queen b3 and his idea is to take on d5 and then after say cd ed because if you take with this pawn then my knight can jump and you know you lose a piece so you take cd ed now you take knight e4 fe4 and bishop e4 and there is this pin here so this pawn cannot move that was the point of queen b3 but oh well john was a good player he played king h8 rook c1 and now he took here so my question to all of you is what should white play here what should white play yeah c5 as suggested by tech wave is not a bad move also practical thinking not a bad move but he plays he played this way and now white to move Yeah, well, I hope that that was just once we face this problem and it won't happen again. So, yeah, first of all, G into F4, you want to keep your structure intact. But the main imbalance here is to take E into F4 so that this file you have control of and the E6 pawn is a weakness. That is the most important thing in this position. So G into F4, I would say, is not a bad move, but not in the spirit. E into F4, Queen F7, White jumped in, Knight into E5, Queen E7, and now, oops, I shouldn't have made that move. But anyway, 
takes was really a brilliant move by white you know uh, i i am completely in awe of this move i don't think many of you would have found this move uh, especially i never thought of it the point is after say fe can you tell me what is white's key point here okay all those who are facing lag just refresh your video yeah it's it's back here alborez win says thanks for the videos from mexico well alborez thank you for joining in white to move Yes, Sairam Sampat, Practical Thinking, Tinku Saha, Shuryan Shwarma. Good job, guys. Ilam Parthi, Preet Matre, Anish Adiga. The right move is to open up the E file again and to play the move F3. Well done to all of you who found this move. And I would like you to keep this move in mind. Bishop into e4. It looks like you're giving up your bishop for a knight. But you get after f3. E into f3. You get this super strong open file. And complete control. Yeah, well done all of those who said f3. Matthews Gellin from Brazil. Hi, Matthews. E in queen c7. Queen a3 was played, threatening queen into f8, king g8, rook into f3, and uh, knight a6. You can see how easily now white managed to finish off the game. First gaining space, and now this knight cannot be removed. This pawn is a big weakness. Bishop d7, queen c2, queen e7, rook e f1. I would have doubled on the e-file, but... Uh, the main plan is that a weakness is often not to be won. You know, many times what we do is we put all our pieces like this and try to attack this weakness when black goes rook e8, bishop c8 and sits there. So the main thing about the weakness is that it makes your opponent's pieces passive. And so you can then start planning something else like in this case white created another weakness and after this he played on both the sides you know Schlechter was a class act so now fixing this another weakness on the board knight will come to g4 and attack these pawns look at these pieces here just no hope no future a check queen here knight jumps in Brilliant game, yeah. This is just I loved how uh, all the pieces came in, and now finally, this is the complete victory of uh, White setup. He has a knight against this poor bishop, a passed pawn, king g2, h4, king f3. Here black resigned the game because he realized he can't do anything. White will play b5, do something here. Sometimes he may go h5. I mean, it's just a lost position. Just a way it could end was something like this. And then, yes, you gave up your knight, but finally the king comes in, the rook joins in. And I hope that... Um, I hope that you, you enjoyed this game. For me, it was really amazing when I saw this game. I learned so much about weaknesses that I was hoping someday I can play like Schlechter. And yes, I got my chance at the MCL tournament, Maharashtra Chess League. It was a very novel kind of a tournament for all those who know. Uh, it was like IPL. where there is an auction and then you get selected in a team you are paid money and you play in a team tournament with uh, rapid games and you know I was a little bit stressed out this was the first game of the 2016 uh, edition and uh, 
I played d4, d5, c4. So now I want you to play like Schlechter, okay? And I'm I'm white, so nc3, f5 was played. So my opponent was Akanksha Hagawane. She was at that point 1700, but now four years later, she's 2300. She's a WGM. No, she has WGM norms. She's yet to be a WGM. Um, so I went knight f3, knight f6. Now what's your move with white? So come on, let's let's make the moves fast here. Yes, Sumit, you are right here. Anyone else? That game which we just saw between uh, John, sorry, uh, Schlechter and John was in 1905. Yeah, bishop f4 as all of you rightly point out. So I played bishop f4. Akanksha played c6. Then I played e3. She played bd6. What should I do here? Anyone? After bishop d6, what should black play? All of you, amazing. Everyone is writing bishop f4 which shows that you are not sleeping. But Uday Kant, Mishra says bg5. Why Uday Kant? Why not bishop f4? Alind Khare, why bg5? Bishop f4, well done. I played e3. She played bishop d6. Yes, Atul is right. Bishop d3. All of you who said g3 here, not necessary. You know, last time g3 was played because queen was on c7 attacking this bishop. But all of you says want to play g3. Well, if she goes here, we can do that. Why not right? Why to do it right now? So let's just finish our development. BD3. Yeah. Yes, you are right. Practical thinking. Anish Adiga, Pankaj Panchal. You are right. So castles. Castles. She went knight e4. Now I played rook c1 and she played queen c7. What to do now? This is... Your move now. Yes, G3 is correct as pointed out by Atul Dahale, Niu Patel, Hema Logu. Karan Parekh, Tech Ved, Sumed Ramteke, Vedant Kulkarni. No, Vedant says something else. Anushka Bhatt, Kimaya Virle, Ilam Parthi, Dhanushka Yappa, Virat Chess, Angel Maniar, Suryan Shwarma. Well done, guys. You are absolutely right. G3. So I said, you take. When you take, I will take like Schlechter. I will be very happy. So she went queen e7. I said, oh, change in plans. Yeah, not like Schlechter. So I forced her. I told her, please take my bishop. So she said, okay, if you force me so much, I will take it. And now white to move. Should you take with the g pawn or the e pawn? It's like sort of a revision of the last game we saw. Maybe Akanksha should have played bishop c7 here. Then it's a bit passive. I go b4. In general, she can't develop very easily. So she said, okay, I will take. Yeah, all of you right move. Sanchit, uh, let me see. How many of you got it right? Niv Patel, Ilam Parthi, Sumed, Anushka Bhatt. Sanchit, Uday Paideti, Ayan Sabarwal, Virat Chess, Hema Logu, Divya HL, Kimaya Virle, Pankaj Panchal, Kali Dos Pechi Ganesh. Well done, guys. EF4. Excellent. No one said GF4 here. I'm trying to find one person will be there who will say GF4. And then I'll ask him why. And he said, I just joined the class like a couple of minutes ago. I, don't, I didn't see what it was. But no one, yeah, till now. Everyone wants to take with the e-pawn. Excellent. EF4. 
and you open up the e file so knight d7 was played and i said okay i want my rook here she played now she is a much stronger player i think uh, and so she decided it's too sad to keep waiting in such a position for example if a move like knight f6 is made what would you suggest <laughs> mayur gondalekar says let me satisfy your fantasy here with g into f4 yeah no a lot of people have started writing that now once i said but okay i know that you guys uh Anup Datta, why am I not reading your comments? No, nothing like that. I just missed them. Do you have anything to say? Here, I am thinking, okay, if we can apply what we learned from what uh, what we learned from Schlechter, yeah, Pankaj Panchal. That's the move I am looking at. Why can't we take bishop into e4? Doesn't this look nice? Because if he takes here, I will take f e knight e5. One minute, let me just get rid of the crow. Too much disturbance. The crow always uh, maybe maybe he he would be learning something about chess, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> 95 and next move I go f3 with a completely strategically winning position. But if he takes f e here, still I think the same thing. Next move I go f3, and I think um, that would be nice. Yeah, he can take with the d pawn could be better, but then still I go here. Next move I may I will still play this. It's true I also have a weakness now to worry about, and uh, as you have rightly pointed out, this would be. Much better. Yeah, scare the crow is the best move. Someone said I should make a show called what? Coco crow. Yeah, Ayan Sabarwal. Coco crow. Okay. Rupesh Ram, I never read your comments. Well, I'll make sure to do that. Crow isn't liking bishop into e4, says Omkar. Okay, b6. I went b4, and now she went a5. White to move. What do you play? I think this move kind of finished off the game. Alan, you need a computer to play tonight's tournament. You can't play it uh, from mobile phone. Pradeep Das, F3 was just much superior than F5 in that position. That's why. Yeah, Ilam Parthi, good move. Gita Muthu, Niv Patel, Suyan Shwarma. Anup Datta, A3 does make sense, looks solid, but you have a forced way to win. And this is what I like. When you have played positionally, you should be energetic. To actually take your chance when it presents itself, and b5 is the correct move because now if you play cb, I have c6 followed by knight b5, and if you take bc, I have bc to take this pawn. So b into c5, b into c6. By the way, a big thanks to Abiram Jaldu who's contributed 500 rupees. Thank you so much, Abiram. Uh, I presume you had a good time learning. Thank you so much. Knight b8, bishop b5, c4, a4, bishop a6. And okay, the end of the game was uh, quite interesting because I did lose one pawn. But the point was my knight here combined with this pawn was so strong that after queen a4, she couldn't develop her pieces here. Everything is passive. And the finish was nice because now white to play and win 
how do you win this game yeah crow is back white to play and win while you think let me just take care of the crow yeah kimaya virle you are absolutely right you know i i got rid of one of my viewers <clears throat> no it doesn't go okay anyway let's let's try to live with it yeah the right move is c7 well done guys that move is nicely done the knight is trapped and if rook into c7 queen e8 is a mate so she went knight c6 i took rook takes rook into e6 and the game ended in a few moves i'm a piece up and i went on to win <clears throat> okay i'm going to show you one last game for today because i really loved it and i actually wrote a poem on this game so that's how much i like this game and i'm going to show you why and i think it will be a nice kind of a thing to remember uh today for today's session so it's the same opening d4 d5 c4 e6 nc3 c6 nf3 f5 bishop f4 bishop d6 now you know the move i'm not going to ask you e3 knight f6 bishop d3 castles <laughs> castles queen c7 well everything happened as per plan g3 knight e4 rook c1 bishop f4 yeah i'm going to show you the poem as well bishop e f4 queen d6 queen e2 knight d7 rook f d1 n d f6 n e5 king h8 c5 so all this is well known here could have taken bishop e4 but played f3 take take b d7 and now i want you to think about what should white play here and think while i take care of the crow and then i am going to show you my poem as well so we started having these wars it seems with these crows yeah okay so the move which is suggested is b4 by tinku saha bishop e4 no not bishop e b4 g4 by lamparti interesting i don't think anyone is going to get this move anup datta ninay nirmay gar chanchal ja b4 and all of you are right yeah b4 does seem good g4 anushka but suryan sharma good not bad rook b3 by uday paideti divya hl b4 sorry g4 anushka bhat ruki one see all of you understand this really well okay that you should go b4 or you should go g4 or you should go ruki one trying to look at this square but you know the move which was played by pillsbury by the way you know pillsbury now yes he was the same guy about whom we we saw that game right uh, that day wasn't he pillsbury the night end game which i showed you or was he someone else 
No, it was Pillsbury versus Gunsberg. So you know that White is a really amazing player. And the amazing thing is no one has found this move. Ah, Kushal Jani. Shrutartham, Shrutartham Maiti have found. Guys, have you seen this game? World Cup also has found this move. You know, the move is knight into d7. And I, can't, I couldn't believe myself. I was thinking to myself, look at this knight here. Look at this beautiful knight. How can he give up for this wretched bishop on d7 which has no future? And this is what I want you to understand about weaknesses. Yes, this is a weak pawn on an open file. And sometimes bad pieces defend your pawns. And so he took here and said e6 is now very weak. You will have to defend it. And I was... I was very surprised. I mean, I would have never made this decision in chess. I would have just played b4. Uh, so, coming to the poem now and to show you what I felt. yeah. So, it was, what was it? Philosophical side of chess part 1. And if you go here, it's called leave the comfort zone. And this is the position which I gave. And I said... Sitting pretty and strong was the knight on e5. Thought I, white just couldn't lose until the knight was alive. Every piece would love to find its own nice heaven, but that just didn't exist for the bishop on d7. Pillsbury with white, who had a position that was so nice, did something next. I just couldn't believe my eyes. He simply threw all the positional principles into the trash and snapped off the bishop on d7 with his knight in a flash. How can a great player, how can a great master like Pillsbury have done what he had? How on earth could he have exchanged a hero for a piece so bad? I sat down coolly and for a while I thought and I started to understand things which superficially one cannot. Thought the knight, though the knight was sitting on the best square that one can find, wasn't it true it was blacking the entire white army behind? While for the bishop on d7 there was absolutely nothing right, didn't it just defend the weakness on e6 with all its might? With those two pieces no longer there, the weakness on e6 now began to glare. Yeah, so just look at this position now. Uh, oh, maybe I, I um, yeah, just look at this position, which is bishop after knight d7, queen d7. I mean, he took with the knight, but let's say this. Say the weakness on e6 began to glare. Some wise men, some wise man had truly had rightly rolled. It's not what comes off, but what matters is what remains on the board. And so I say, things that you prize the most must be given up someday. The clouds will have to make way for sun's ray. And to become stronger, you will have to experience the pain that will make you moan. And for that, you will have to come out of your comfort zone. For in life, if your hands are always full with the things you like, then by this thought you will always be haunted that there was never enough space for the new things you always wanted. Uh, well, I was very young at that point, but I think it was not a bad one. It's written here on Chess Base India. If you go to the philosophical side of chess called Leave Your Comfort Zone, uh, I hope uh, that you have learned something important and I always like to remember stuff with some anecdotes, some incidents and it stays in my mind, you know. Um, yeah, the, the link of the poem is this one. Let me just put it in the live stream here. Okay, so maybe you can have a look later. Yeah, the poem worked. The crow is gone. Didn't disturb me during the poem. Okay, so...
yes ahmed justin as he rightly pointed out a bad bishop is a good defender by the way you can check out philosophical side of chess part 2 part 3 part 4 i think i have several parts where i write about the philosophy in chess um so i think that's the end of today i think you still have 1 hour to register for chess base india's online tournament go here on the second article pay your money uh, or donation for the cause play against some of the best players at 8 pm today follow the instructions carefully at the end of the article like how to download the software it's given here download it from here log in from here go to this room go to join event and you will be completely fine okay don't panic that's the important thing aditi says that was really good instead of becoming a ca you should have become a poet well Well, you can become both, yeah. You don't need to leave something. Atul Dahale says, "Lovely poem. Thank you so much, Atul." Uh, I Ahmed Justin says, "I am Sagar. During training, we know what to answer and play. Maybe because there's a coach to guide. But during playing, there are so many things to choose, imbalances to compare. Any tips?" I think there was a famous player. Maybe it was Muhammad Ali or someone who said. i sweat it out in the practice so that i don't have to go through the uh, sort of depression of losing while playing so so his main point was you have to work so hard in your practice sessions and you need to create a scenario which is so close to a real game so you shouldn't have people around you when you are practicing you shouldn't have the tv going on or the computer going on or the music playing or you shouldn't be eating food okay if you want to eat something fine but not constantly like having chips and all you should be sitting there with a the clock you know if you don't have a chess clock put it on your mobile phone there's an app called chess clock put 10 minutes put it there or put 20 minutes think for the position and then instead of executing the move write it down because many times you have certain moves in your mind which you think okay this is the right way to play but when you write it down you are actually writing down what you feel and what you don't write down is what you have not thought many times when you think and you see the answer ha ah, i had thought this i had thought this but actually you have not thought about it it's just sometimes your brain tries to confuse you so write it down and this way you make a scenario which is very close to tournament play and then whatever you work during practice will be useful during your events this is what i feel yeah sudhir kumar says the more you sweat in peace the less you bleed in war very good excellent yeah mayur gondalekar please catch up on your sleep thank you so much for your contribution uh and i think today was a great day thank you ragini for for your comments and uh, sorry for my internet connect disconnections at the start but i think it was worth trying to switch on the internet and all of that um and we will you know meet tomorrow again for the 17th session uh, till then thank you all yeah you can watch the tournament you can come to the vishy anand arena on play chess and watch it um yes justin gardner is very correct pillsbury's knight into d7 is very similar to fisher's knight into d7 against taimano excellent very good maybe add this to the homework so we had 10 games of um 10 games to be seen of lasker versus schlechter just add this game which is fisher versus taimano so if you go to fisher i will try to tell you which game it is uh, fisher robert james too many fishers yeah here it is robert james fisher and he played against taimano he was black ah oh, sorry uh, taimano was black very good suggestion by justin gardner who is by the way a coach from in the us runs the hot chess academy hot 
yeah this was the game i think yes if i'm not mistaken no not this one it was no not even this yeah no which was this game fisher timanov or maybe it was not fisher timanov maybe it was fisher petrosian yeah Knight into d7. Yeah, all those who uh, would like to leave, please do so. I'm just trying to figure out which game was it. Um, someone can help me with that. I remember there was Knight into. I think it was Fisher Petrosian, uh, not Taimanu. Fisher Petrosian. One zero candidates. Yeah, yeah, it was Fisher Petrosian. No, not this one. You know, it was a move where everyone said Fisher doesn't understand chess, something like that. Ocean Fisher. Yeah, this was the game. Correct. This was the one. He could have played Bishop B5 and won an exchange, but he did not. Uh, and at the end, take. You know, he had this bishop here, which was pretty bad. The knight was beautiful, but Fisher said, "Hey, what the hell." It doesn't matter what remains on the board, what goes out of the board, but what matters it what is what remains on the board. So this was Fisher Petrosian game number seven from the candidates match. Please have a look at that. Uh, yes, yeah, Ilamparthi. It was from the candidate semi-finals where Fisher won. Saurav Banerjee. Yes, that knight into d7 created a sensation. Absolutely. Everyone said Fisher doesn't understand chess. How can he give up his knight for such a good bishop? But Fisher said, I don't care about what goes out of the board. My bishop, what remains on the board is superior to his knight. That's what matters. It's fantastic. Funny Verma said, will, if the lockdown extends, will you extend the chess classes? Let's look. Let's let's wait for the lockdown to get extended. If in case I have certain ideas which I will share with you when it happens. Okay. Thank you all. Sagar Chess says this game is explained in simple chess book. Okay. Wonderful. All right, guys. So let's meet tomorrow at 9 a.m. and hopefully there will be no internet issues. And thank you for being such wonderful uh, people and contributing to the stream. I'll see you tomorrow.